Hello and welcome to App Spy's live stream on Twitch. It's Wednesday, so this is the Eye on the App Store, when we get together, get out our iPad, and show you all the new games that are gonna, gonna be coming out tomorrow for you. We get them about 24 hours in advance, so this is your heads up on what you need to buy this week. I'm James Gilmore, joining me as always is Peter Wellington. Hi. And we're just gonna walk you through them, lovely new releases. We've got about five today, I think. Let me have a quick check. Uh, some old games. Oh, there we go. F five or six or seven. We're actually probably going to get through maybe five of them because we'll be on for about an hour and just show you bits and pieces. Some you may have heard of, for example, a bit of Angry Birds, Angry Birds, a new Angry Birds game. Eh, might, might have heard of that. Um, others, perhaps less so. Uh, there's one from last week which we might touch upon as well, Plundernauts. Um, but I don't know. Like, what, what, what should we start with? I think, I think we'll save the Angry Birds up a little bit. Yeah, because that is epic. Oh, oh, very good. Because ah. of the ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. um, should we start off with um, a little light reading? Ooh, uh, all right then. I think I know what you're going for for here. Um, 999HD, which isn't some emergency service contact number like you might think it is. Let me boot it up here. But actually, it's a conversion of a game from the DS. What's it called? Nine Doors? Nine something? Nine, uh, nine Doors, uh, Nine uh, Parrots, Nine... <laughs> um... You see, we've done our research, obviously you could tell. Um, uh, it's, uh, well, it, yes, it's Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, the novel. That's right. Uh, on the DS, this was an adventure game, kind of a choose-your-own-adventure, which has mini-game elements to it, so you play little physics puzzles and stuff like that as well. Um, in this instance, for the iOS release, which is about to appear, um, I think it might be already out, actually, this one. I'll double-check, mm -hmm. but for this release, they've taken out the mini-games and just left the novelization, which... Hmm. Yeah, I know. It may or may not be a good thing, so it's kind of a stripped-down version. I guess these kind of things play well on an iPad, because, yeah. well, novels and stuff, visual novels, they work really well on a touchscreen device, that makes good sense. I don't know if it's going to be a little bit weaker without the puzzles, but mm -mm. I'm, not really, I'm not really sure. We'll skip past that intro bit and we'll just start at the very beginning just to show you. We're going to do a new game. Read us a story, James. Yes, I will do. Of course, this is the live stream, so feel free to jump into the chat room and uh, tell me I'm playing it wrong, ask us questions, talk to Peter. Peter will be manning it. So, yes, uh, absolutely. I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the chat window. Um, we've got uh, all sorts of people in there already. Gap wow. Rules, Pavandeep. 34 caffeine dreamer who uh, actually is our new community manager absolutely uh, across uh, app spy and pocket gamer and all the, the 148 apps all these different places pocket nova hello loads of people already in uh, the chat window so get involved and ask any questions and i will relay them to james um so uh, obviously uh, this is a story um is this so is this more like a visual novel or is it a just a, a sort of graphic comic book, like a, that, that sort of a thing. Well, I think it, I'm going to be about to get text flashed at me now. There's a countdown on screen and something bad has happened on this ship. Um, okay. From what I understand, it's more visual novel. Uh, I don't know okay. if there's going to be voiceover because, yeah, text is already scrolling on the screen. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit about the background of it because I heard about it when it came out on the other devices. I don't know if it was... DS or Vita, actually. I'm confused now. But um, apparently a loud noise has startled Junpei awake and his eyes snap oh, open. I'm poor tapping... Junpei. I know, nightmare. I'm <laughs> tapping the screen and that's advancing the text as I go. Uh, so I'm stuck on this oil tanker. Um, first thing I've noticed, actually, they've rezzed up the graphics quite oh, nicely. Oh, nice. Have they done that nice softing thing for the <laughs> no, 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 no. Final this... Fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> no, this actually looks quite good. Mm. You see, that sometimes they do do that with um, older games. This is fairly recent, though, but there is an HD version for the iPad and a non-HD version for your iPhone. Those so, let's keep it retro. <laughs> I know, one of those versions where you can buy two different versions of the app, which oh, is a, wow. a, a bit of a pain, really. Like, everything should be universal now, but, but what are you going to do? However, the graphics do look good. The pictures have been messed up really nicely. I will point out that this can be done very badly. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Ace Attorney HD. <laughs> That was what I was thinking of immediately. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. takes the DS version and kind of makes the visuals all HD, and it looks a bit weird. Oh, naff. Yeah. Someone's... They might say that. I don't like it. Apparently, I'm kind of ignoring the text here. It was a bed, a three level bud bunk bed. Junpei had fallen from the topmost bunk. What a nightmare. Have you ever done that? Oh, I've done that. Uh, what? I... Fallen from a bunk? 
dog bed. Yeah, well, I used to, like, I've got a young, younger sister, two years younger than me, and uh, when we were, like, really, really small, we sort of shared a room, and I had a top bunk, and I have uh, fallen off that bunk mid-sleep. And you wake up halfway down. And oh, kind of, that's the worst. I know, there's a split second where you're like, oh, I'm foot, and then thud. Uh, and, yeah, it kind of hurts. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well... Still, I um, had the top bunk, because I was the best. Yeah, well, I mean, that w that clearly would be the best. When you were younger, did you ever, uh, did you ever have like, did you ever make forts out of, uh, out Gosh, of? Who like, didn't? Come on, of, of course I made forts. What was forts. the sign that you put outside on yours? Sign? I didn't. Yeah, I everyone, didn't... everyone puts a sign outside of their fort. Mine was, um, uh, mine was <laughs> Peter rules. Okay. Uh, not, I didn't not... do signage. That sounds a bit professional. It was. It. Well, we were pros. Um, obviously, we've got more people coming into the chat room. I'm going to give some shout outs here to Emo Gamer, Hans Karasu, uh, and uh, Nipple of Justice is here. Apps by Back again. Love Hello that. again. Come on. Um, but um, if you are just joining us, we are playing uh, 999 The Novel HD, um, which is two pounds 99 uh, on the uh, British App Store. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's that? About five, six dollars the equivalent? Yeah, 2 is um, four dollars 99 on the US. US app store oh, because that. of maths. Um, so it's so it's a visual, uh, yeah, it's a visual novel. I guess these are becoming more and more popular. I was playing um, Hakuoki, which is about oh, yeah. samurai, samurai vampires that you f have to try and fall in love with. Um, mm -hmm. It's my kind of game, uh, and uh, but they are becoming more and more popular. So is is there is there anything? Are you making much in the way of decisions, or is it literally like you're just reading? At off the moment, it? it's just text. Um, however, I have encountered something scrawled on the front of the door of my cabin, a number five. Um, mm -hmm. From what I understand about the game, because it's going a bit slowly at the moment, uh, it's kind of a saw-like situation, as in I'm waking up in this cruise liner and I'm going to discover that there are other people on this cruise liner and that we are trapped and uh, we have to get out but we have to kind of play the expectations of the other crewmates against each other yeah so it's, it's kind of like a uh, mind game there's uh I don't know if it's in this it's not and it's not sort of spoiler uh, but um <laughs> there's uh I believe there is a sort of um, I think it's called the prisoner's dilemma it's like a classic uh. It's like a classic game idea where basically uh, you have... Uh, it's also a little bit like Golden Balls, the British uh, TV... How do I know that? I don't know television. I don't know how you know that. I've never heard I of that. Golden Balls. So it's, it's basically you have to... Um, the Prisoner's Dilemma is essentially if you rat out the other person... You, there's two people, right, in a prison, and if you rat out the other person, then you can go free, right? Right. But if you don't rat... but if the other person rats you out, then mm. you get locked away. If you both don't rat one another out, you both go free. But if you both rat one another out, then uh, then you uh, then you both go to prison, right? I've just tied myself in a mental knot thanks to that explanation. Oh, it, it, well, well, I don't know what my name is anymore. Uh, um, so right, I've got I've got number five on my watch. Number uh, fives are appearing everywhere. Apparently, it's strange and a bit weird. I'm trying to take my watch off, and it turns out that there's no buckle or clasp. It's attached to my arm, and I cannot get it off. It's all going a bit sinister. I'm going to try and skip through this text a little bit because I would like to get to a decision so I can show you how the game bit actually works. Yeah, that would be useful. Because at the moment it's just a bit texty. Frustration, desperation, lots of pictures of pots and pans, and he's looking at the room again and freaking out. Why? What the hell has happened to me? I think we reviewed this. Um, uh, if not, oh hello. If not on well, we Apps by then certainly on Pocket Gamer. On Pocket Gamer, we reviewed the sequel, the Vita sequel. Oh, okay. Certainly did, certainly did review that. That was, um, I reviewed that. It was called Virtue's Last Reward. Um, it's part of it's, an ongoing series, isn't it? So it's it's meant to be a there's meant to be a trilogy. Um, uh, more shout outs to the chat community. Spy fan, hello. Ooh, monkey, hey. back again. Back Brilliant. again. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Um, uh, but yeah, it's part of, meant to be part of a trilogy, and the third one is is, is supposedly out fairly soon. It's made by right. a company called Chunsoft who actually pioneered the, the visual novel oh. um, with um, I'm going to get absolutely destroyed by Japanese game fans here but there was a, I believe it's called something like Detective Detective Story on the NES that was Chunsoft's first sort of project and they basically oh, made right. the visual novel what it is and this is the sort of ultimate evolution of it at 
the moment. Gotcha. Um, we're, we're getting, uh, <laughs> clearly we are getting people in the chat saying, this game isn't very exciting. I'm I kind I of with you on this. There's not, it's literally I, just text at the moment. And I, I wanted to get to at least one decision so I, before I skipped out of it, but I don't know if we're going to get there. This game doesn't, this game doesn't preview too well, does it, unfortunately? <laughs> um, so it's, it's more cerebral. It's more, it's more, hmm. I don't know. I, I, it's cool to sort of read the book, but I know that there are bits where it becomes choose your own adventure and you're supposed to be able to make choices. And I was just hoping to get to at least one bit uh, before we moved on. But we're starting off slow. We're easing you in. There's plenty more games to come. Uh, I'm fast forwarding through a lot of stuff here. He's seeing, oh, heck, there's something weird. It's a dude. Oh, it's a gas mask. And he looks a bit sinister. Oh. And he's going to speak to me. But then there's some tear gas. Oh, good. Which is never really good. Hello, hello, here we go. Some actual conversation. Consider this a privilege. You have been chosen. A rasping and voice worms its way out of the gas mask. I'm going to participate in a game. But you'll put your life on the line. A game would be good about now, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, would, that, that would be nice. Anytime you're ready, really. Any, anytime you want to... I mean, a Flappy Bird would be fine at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in fairness, in fairness, like, this isn't necessarily supposed to be a game that is, has loads and loads and loads of interactions. You're supposed to enjoy the story and enjoy the novel, but uh, I, don't, I don't even think we're going to get to a text bit. I'm going to have to move on to something else. I think, we, uh, th I think, I think the chat room has spoken, I think, and, uh, and we have decided uh, that, uh, yeah, this needs to uh, come. <laughs> to come to <laughs> All right, then. Uh, well, you can see what it looks like. How much did he say? £2.99? £2.99 and... $4.99, some... yeah. that will be. Um, yeah. we'll just have to... Oh, hello, there are some maths. Are we doing maths? Oh, too late, too late. I'm sorry, I'm moving on. Anyway, there you go. Done. Yeah. Out of there. Oh, so, there you go. I, I, I think that's going to appeal to people who've played Chunsoft games before, maybe didn't play this game, because it didn't come to Europe, it only came to America, you had to import it if you wanted to play it. That's um, right. Yeah, I, I think that's going to kind of appeal to them. Um, okay. What we're uh, going to move on to now, we're yeah, going to go on. for Scallywags. Scallywags. Now that's spelled incorrectly, isn't it? Um, I, uh, what's the correct spelling? Well, it's spelled S-K-A-L-L-Y-W-A-G-S uh, oh, in the right. game, but I believe it's spelled with a C. It is, that is outrageous. Now, I had a little look at this, I had a video uh, preview of it, and uh, this looks a bit more action-oriented. I Thank think... God. <laughs> yeah, I know, God, whatever. It's a bit more like, almost like whack-a-mole, it's kind of a gallery shooter in which I'm taking control of this cannonball, touching a scallywag, and... Shooting it. That's more like it. I shot a thing, and then Thank I've goodness, got... we've shot something. And then I've got to pick up the gold that the creatures leave behind when you shoot them. So I'm going to shoot, I'm going to shoot. Bam, bam, bam. I'm hitting gold coins and collecting them. I don't know if I can drag in order to take out lots at the same time, but uh, at the moment, I'm just tapping. I've got tap loads. Of... Oh, I've got TNT as well, and I can use that to blow up the platforms they're on. This I is love... more like it. Yeah, shooting things. I love... I, lo I like the walrus. <laughs> I, I like, the, like the I've got this little um uh, kind of blocks. They look like they're pirates because they've got those little pirate hats. But oh crap, they're they're retaliating. I wasn't expecting retaliation. Mm. Nightmare. Okay, so hmm hmm interesting. Mm. You can drag through several enemies at once. If I make a swiping motion like this, whoop, I'll be able to shoot both. Uh, they shoot one after the other though. They don't. Sh the cannon doesn't fire, you know, cluster shots or anything. It still takes it in turns. I'm going to shoot the TNT here, blow the ground out from beneath their feet. That's pretty good. Um, I think though, if I do that, I don't get the chance to collect as much gold, the gold coins, which I need to tap before they fall down and into the sea. That seems to be how it's working anyway. Tap, tap, tap. I'd kind of like to hear the music for this one. I can't hear the music when I stream, usually. Uh, but I bet you it's some kind of jaunty pirate jig. Mm. Um, a friend of mine can't hear words in songs. Uh, what? Sorry, what? So, a friend of mine can't... He can't... Has he got the he, volume up? He can't hear... Yeah. He can't hear lyrics. Oh, oh, okay. Can you hear normal normal conversation? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But right, he, but, but when his brain, for some reason, he's a bit of a genius, but he's a bit of a he's the he's one of the smartest dumb people that I, I know. Uh, <laughs> he has this PhD. He's crazy, crazy clever, but he 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 cannot hear the lyrics. Okay. When music is playing at the same time, isn't that odd? Isn't that, that a weird thing? That um, is unusual. It's very unusual. Um, uh, I've been corrected by Gap Rules. Thank you very much for the correction. It is spelt with a C in the game. I, I, for it some is, reason, I got it into is. my head with a, with, that we had a K, so my apologies on that one. Oh, right. um, so, um, 
if you are just joining us, we are playing Scallywags with a C. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm currently looking at the chat room and uh, making sure that um, uh, that any questions that you guys have are being asked to James. Oh, um, my ship's been blown up. Oh, it's a nightmare. So I'm going to have to take my revenge on these little creatures as they, as and when they appear. See, the, the, the choice of this seems to be, like, I can either shoot the ground out from beneath their feet with uh, TNT, which is mm. obviously kind of explosive and fun, but I don't, the coins are more, much more likely to fall into the sea, and then mm. I can't get them, uh, which is obviously a bit of a pain. Um, there's also treasure and stuff that pops up, like treasure chests, I have to shoot that as well, and occasionally, one of the little guys fires back at me, and I have to tap the cannonball that's flying towards my face uh, to avoid it shooting me and uh, taking me out so that's kind of the way that it all works as you can see and I'm just gradually advancing towards my uh, slightly knackered looking pirate ship if I've read the bits beforehand correctly then I think you can also use the coins that you're collecting to like upgrade your pirate ship and maybe buy some more impressive cannons or something like that let's have a go oh more explosions so, so I, I like the visuals. I really like them. I think they look... Um... That's quite neat. Um, you can also turn the... Uh, if I put my finger on the screen and kind of drag, I can move the uh, cannon around if I really Ooh. want to. Mm. It's... Um, it doesn't feel quite as responsive as perhaps you would expect. I don't know if that's deliberate, but when I press the uh, items to shoot, there's a little delay before the cannonball actually flies out of my cannon, which, I mean, maybe because it's stoking... Maybe they're going for realism, I don't know. But yeah. uh, there is a little bit of a pause there, and it doesn't feel instantaneous. So it feels a little bit less responsive than maybe you'd expect, or maybe you'd like. I don't know. Um, but I've got a new high score on Shipwreck. Yay me. Um, mm -hmm. I get the option to either replay that or go back to my home. So I'm assuming I just go back to the home and I keep advancing forward up the map. Yep, that's what's going on now. So I've done that, and I'm now heading towards this skull-looking thing. Pirate Cove, it's called. We'll have a little bash at that. And then we'll probably move on to something else, just to keep rocketing through uh, what we're doing here. Because at some point, we've got to, I've got to show you guys Angry Birds. Epic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that is going to be the big game that we're going to be talking about um, later yeah. on. I think we're going to, I think we're going to come to that at the end of the show because uh, it's uh, it's a nice one to sort of go out on, and also it, it will take a little bit of sort of explaining. I think from what I've heard so far. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean the, but this follows like you know a, a similar sort of structure to the you know it's a physics puzzler in which you fling well you shoot things. I suppose it's, it's kind of phys it's like physics. Gary shooter. I mean, it reminds me. Do you remember the um the weird license that was used in a peculiar way that turned out to be quite good. Skylanders. Mm. There was a Skylanders gallery shooter that was actually surprisingly good. You didn't necessarily expect it because previously they've been used as platform games. You know, the Skylanders are used uh, for running around being a little dragon on the consoles and uh, occasionally in a more kind of resource management almost not RTS but you know one of those Clash of Clans style games they released one of those but uh, Lost Islands yeah. that's the one that's the one but um, uh, the gallery shooter one was actually kind of alright yeah quite, quite jolly oh what was that called um, I said jolly because of because uh, of pirates oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Pirates. yeah that's really uh, awesome. that's, really that's cool. yeah um, yeah um, so I mean <laughs> I really like Lost Islands Lost Islands I thought that was really good Ah, oh, uh, swag. I've found more swag. And not in a uh, crap Justin Bieber kind of swag. I mean, actual booty oh, swag. Yeah, here's, some, here's something that I don't understand. What's that? Swag. Three stars. Right, okay, I think we're putting that one to bed. But do carry on asking about swag. That was uh, Scallywags. Uh, do you know how much that one costs? I haven't got the price to hand. Scallywags. Uh, I want to say... Uh, I don't know. I can't find it. I think that's the only All one right. so far that I haven't been able to find. Well, it'll yeah. be out tomorrow. All of these, if they're yeah, not out already, will be out at midnight tonight. So tomorrow morning you'll be able to go and pick mm. them up. Mm. Right, with that one out of the way, let's okay, have a look at Braveland. More, I'm going to okay. change the little uh, graphic on screen so that okay. you can all see... Braveland cool. from Tortuga team. This is the first real-time uh, strategy. Oh, sorry, no, it's not not so much real-time strategy. More of the uh, RPG sort of thing. It's a JRPG in the style of you know your Final Fantasy or something like that, which is weirdly 
more what the Angry Birds game is also like, which is mm. kind of strange. I'm going to start off just easy on this because we want to get through it as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get a bit of backstory from this guy telling me he grew up in a small village and yada yada, and we're all going to wait until his, his village or parents are killed. I'm killed. just guessing here. Oh, look, a ferocious gang of bandits has attacked the village and killed oh. anyone who resisted. Who saw that coming? I'm surprised. I know, um, this never happens. So, uh, so to, to, to cap off our, our, our just just very quickly to go back to um, Scallywags, mm -hmm. uh, hello, Incredi, who's in the chat room. It's the dev of Scallywags. Um, ah, hello. Uh, Incredi says, um, the game is out tomorrow, and it's free. Um, free? And uh, A2 Seth is wondering, uh, James, are you going to wear the swag that you've won on the Throne of Games this week, the Pocket Gamer podcast? Oh, oh you know it. I'll be blinged up like mm. you read about, which oh. is going to be actually live stream. This is a first for the podcast. We're going to oh, yes, be we should, uh, streaming should. the the Pocket Gamer podcast on the Apps by channel tomorrow at 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time if you're in the UK, or that's 10 a.m. East yes. Pacific Standard Time. PST. I, get, I get the ESTs and the PSTs confused. Mm. Uh, yeah, and that's a first for us. So myself and Peter, we're going to just appear, do the podcast as normal, but we're going to live stream it so that A, you can see our faces, lucky you, I guess, um, and you can actually interact. You can use the chat room to ask us questions about stuff and we can maybe do a little Q&A session or something like that. Just a bit different, not done it before, but if you want to come and join us, we would be delighted to have you. So come and, come and take part. Now, I've just advanced a little bit further up the map. Good. Uh, and I've just got a peasant. I've acquired a peasant. Excellent. Which stuff. is great because I've always wanted a peasant. Um, uh, sorry, peasant or pheasant? Uh, no, peasant. Um, I've always wanted a pheasant. Uh, uh, mm, right. They're delicious, I hear. Okay, a couple of hungry wolves is no match for us. I think we're about to get uh, turn based fighting 101. Fantastic. Here it is. I'm going to take on this young wolf. Uh, <laughs> it's a hex based system. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, the characters uh, are on hexagonal squares and they give me areas of effect around which I can move. So I can move my squad to this hexagon here. He mm -hmm. strolls across and then I'm tapping on the wolf and I've attacked him. And he's attacked me back twice, the bugger. Uh, and I've just gone and attacked again. So those happened automatically. I tapped it once and then it just kept going backwards and forwards. So now I've got another wolf. I'm going to move forward to the hex uh, next to him. And I'm going to tap the wolf again. And one strike with the pickaxe, and that's taken him out. Victory for me, and I didn't lose a single warrior. So I've got some bonuses and XP for that. Fantastic. Hmm. This is, the, the, uh, this is looking... Uh, this looks way too complicated already for me. Already. <laughs> really? Do you yeah, fear already. the uh, uh, RPGs, then? I fear... I fear... Uh, no, not... Uh, progress. Well, you fear strategy. progress. Yeah, yeah progress. <laughs> uh, SRPGs, strategy role-playing games, I, I, I tend to... I, I'm not a huge fan of. I'm playing one at the moment mm -hmm. um, um, uh, that I quite enjoy, but like they are very, very few and far between. But this does look right. really good. Gap Rule says that this looks a bit like Scrolls on PC, and a Tooth Seth, Seth says uh, this looks similar to Outwitters. Um, I'm, I, I agree. This does look like those games. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, I guess I've got a million questions, but um, uh, while I think of um, which one to put up first, um, if you are just joining us now, uh, we are playing Brave Land by Tortuga Team. Um, I'm looking at the chat room and uh, and putting across salient points and, and uh, asking any questions to James here as he plays. Um, so, uh, yeah, do put your questions into the chat room. But I guess my big first question is, um, like, is this like a true... RPG. It looks a little bit like you're going through stages and then doing strategy bits and pieces. Well, it, like, is it... I'm advancing up a, up a map, so it's a linear progression. I'm not choosing where I want to go or anything like that, so it's very straight and linear, at least at the moment. Mm. Um, I've gained another character now. I've got an archer as well, so okay. uh, I'm going to attack him, which I can do without moving in this instance. He's within about three hexes, and because he's an archer, he's got a bit of range on him. So I'm going to loose an arrow at this wolfy bugger, but I've also got some other people who are attacking, a couple of bandits bandits have shown up, so I'm going to have to uh, give them a bit of a sorting out, uh, which is what I'm going to do with the other guy. So Pitchfork, actually, I'm going to send the Pitchfork guy up here to take out this wolf, because I want the archer to stay back. So he can okay. shoot from here, and he's going to attack now one of the bandit guys. And hopefully I'm uh, sort of obstructing... No, I'm not, because he's... The bandit's starting to attack the uh, archer anyway. But it's okay, my Pitchfork warrior fellow has stepped in, so that's great. Archer's going to shoot the guy again, because we've got another folk, another geezer who's turned up. Uh, and I've taken them both out. No losses, 
and uh, result XP up. Fantastic. You've done all right, haven't you? So it's the same turn-based um, role-playing stuff that you'd see in Final Fantasy, but the difference here is that you can move. So you've got this hex-based movement system that lets you coast around a bit. Yeah. Is that added element? It's a bit. It's a bit. Um, yeah. It is. It, it, it is a sort of more strategy RPG. It's a bit like Disgaea, maybe. Or yeah. Uh, uh, yeah you don't know, do you? I don't know, even know why I said Disgaea. You were but like, oh it, yeah. It reminds me of. Uh, there's a lot of um, board games which are hex based. Like Catan. Remember I haven't Catan played game? that. Is Catan good? Um, well, it's it's based on uh, regions and stuff. You're taking on regions, but it's that same kind of hex based movement combat thing. So I guess it has something in common with that. There's some DNA there, but. I like the art style. This is very clean, very bright. Um, <laughs> good line. My arrogance is exceeded only by the length of my beard. Mm. So let me shorten it for you. That's a that's stepping to me if I ever heard it. Come on then. Come on. Uh, them's be fighting words. So now, oh crap, I've got a load of them. There's like four waiting to kick my ass. Apparently I can activate the shot of fury, which I'm totally going to do. Do it. That lets me attack anyone on the battlefield regardless of how far away from me they are. So it's going to be uh, a long range shot. I'm going to wing it straight at this guy. He's going to go... Oh, look at that. One hit kill. Oh, no. This other guy has launched a kind of Thor-like attack by holding up his hammer and lightning striking me. What a git. Right. I'm going to advance with my pitchfork wielding chap and I'm going to keep my archer... I need to move him a bit closer but I'm still going to keep him behind because uh, I don't want him to be able to get in any trouble. Right. I've shot another one of those guys. They're advancing on me. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay, I'm going to attack this bloke because he's closest. Fantastic. He's fought me back. And I'm going to use the archer on him as well. Hopefully that will take him down. There it is. He is down and out. Fantastic. The other guys have moved a bit close, though. Dangerously close to my archer. So I'm going to move the pitchfork guy up and then stick it in his face. And he's dead. Result. Nice. Another shot for the archer. See if I can take out this other bearded chap before he lets lightning upon me. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, no, he's battered me with his hammer. Mm. What a bugger. Here he goes again. Oh, lightning strike on my archer. Nearly, I nearly died then, but he's down before he can fight back. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, I, that gives you a, a fairly good idea of what that game looks like. Yeah, we've we've got some we've got some interesting comments. Like um, A2 Seth says, you know, this is like RPG chess, and I guess that is kind of yeah, kind that's of, quite a good comparison. Yeah, I like that. Kind of on it, and it, but also, but then Hans Kan Kanasu says, you know, it's like a turn-based RPG. It's, yeah, it's like it's got these kind of it's got these kind of it looks very mixed. And it's I, elements I, I, of a few things. Yeah, and um, somebody, uh, 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 another person in our chat room, GTA Sam, says, I'm watching this in chemistry class. High five to you. <laughs> High five. Wow. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's not on the curriculum strictly, but I well, admire your ingenuity. Do you know what? The, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't pay attention in science class, and look how far. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <sighs> yeah. Best, <sighs> left, less said about that, the better. Yeah. Okay. We'll have a quick look at this battle, and then I think we're going to jump on to uh, something else. We've got a couple more games to go through. Okay, I've got a vagrant archer, who's someone who became a robber after barely learning how to shoot. So I've got uh, another another person joined my flock. This is fantastic. I've got three people, right? You're doing I've, really well. I've got a rogue guy who can run uh, like half the length of the the battlefield. More than that, in fact, he's badass. Right, my archer is going to take a shot. Wapong! at the other archers. Problem is, there's loads and loads of archers here, which means they can all attack from range, and they're all oh no, they're all laying into my archer. Every one of them. Ah. Oh, my archer's nearly dead. What, what's everybody got against your archer? Um, oh, he's, he looks a bit like Robin Hood, and uh... Yeah, and everyone's like, come on mate, who are you kidding? Um, James Rooney, 15, is saying, is this game free? The answer is no, it's not. It's, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, $2.99 uh, in the US App Store, it's one pound ninety nine if you use Great British Pounds, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's um, a, a, according to a couple of sort of user reviews. I don't think we've got any reviews on PG or App Spy at the moment. No, not yet because it hasn't gone live. We've only yeah. just downloaded it well, from the New Zealand App Store. But in the next couple of days, you'll see reviews for all these games mm. popping up, except for Angry Birds at uh, Epic, and I'll explain why in a bit. We keep teasing that, don't we? I know. We keep teasing it. But it's coming, um, it's coming, don't worry. It is coming. Um, and, uh, yes, so, um, uh, according to a couple of user reviews, um, it is, it's not very IAP heavy, so... Um, That's it, good. 
yeah, money up front, basically. We like to hear that. It's okay, we don't mind paying up front, and uh, free-to-play can be all right, as long as it doesn't gouge you to death, but when you combine the two, when you pay up front for a game, and you then have to buy our IAP stuff for energy, then it can do one. We're not yeah, interested. it can absolutely do. Um, how much would we pay uh, for this in swag? In swag? Oh, yeah, I, in ooh. Bieber swag. Let me see. I suppose uh, uh, three and a half doubloons mm -hmm. and uh, possibly one of those nice sort of gem style necklaces that you see the pirates wear. It looks oh, a, bit, they are nice. it's a bit dainty, but oh no, it's a bit much. It's a bit, it's a bit flashy. You think, you think, oh, do I need to do, have this like going down to Tesco's? And then you're like, yeah, I got one. Yeah, of course special. I do. Yeah. Right, let's move him a little bit closer. Oh, I can't quite get to this guy yet. So I'm just going to move over there. One more shot from my archer. And he's down, and the victory is mine. All right, I think we will leave it there. So that is uh, a game called Brave Brave Land. Land. That's yes. the one. Uh, you can grab that from Midnight Tonight in the UK or US app stores. Right, next up on the list, what are we going to have a look at? Ooh, let's Ooh. take a look at... Fairway. Fairway Solitaire Blast. Yes, we're looking at this. Fish games, I believe. That's the, the very same. Now, the very same. This is the kind of bizarre merger of the card game Solitaire, which is very popular, which everybody knows, and the sport of golf, which not necessarily the two things you'd put together, but the first game proved to be incredibly successful. People mm. really, really loved it. And it's been out for like a, a year or two now. It's been out for a while. And here is the sequel. Now, this has only just gone live. Uh, I think it's been, I think it's been soft launched. I'm not 100% on that, but mm -hmm. uh, you may be able to get it on the New Zealand App Store right now, but you might have it's to wait. It's definitely available in Canada. Ah, Canada, there you go. So it might be being soft launched at the moment, but we're going to have a preview here so you can see what it will be like in the future. So it's going to lay down the rules for Solitaire, which is good because I can't remember. Okay, so before, let's set the scene. James, yes. do you like Solitaire? Uh, it's all right if if you're lonely and you know you, you've got a copy of um, Windows ninety five, yeah, and, and that's it. That's all you got. Then you know I, I, a bit of Minesweeper in one window, a bit of Solitaire in the other. I keep a PC on hand at all times, running Windows ninety five, so I can play Solitaire, the classic version. Um, do you like golf? Uh, I kind of I like playing it, but I don't like watching it because it's incredibly dull as a spectator sport. Okay. Because because you've got a bit of you've got a bit of Scottish in you, haven't you? So I have, uh, I have a smidge, a smidge you, of Scottish. Yes. A, 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 um, a smidge of Scottish is that the is that the right word? What would be the uh, proper Scottish word for it? A um, no, a sporran. A sporran of Scottish. A sporran of Scottish. Yes. Uh, okay. Because I think all the like US that. users are going what sporran? Oh, what? what? What is a sporran? Don't look it up, guys. Um, <laughs> do. It's up to you. Um, so okay, so this this seems like it could be a good game then for you. Well, um, I'm I'm going around and it's it's showing me lots of different variation mini games based around the idea. So at the moment, I'm uh, tapping whichever card is either one higher or one lower than the card at the bottom of the screen. So in this case, the ace is higher than the king, so I'm going to go ahead and tap it. Once you've hit an ace, you can usually go to a two. So that's what I'm going to go for next. And uh, I've got the two. I need to hit the three and the four, five. Uh, unfortunately, it's gone to four again. I can do that. So that uncovers the next one. So one lower or one higher, like I say. I've run out of places to go now, but I can tap the bucket at the bottom to give me a new card if I need to. That's given me a three. So I can then use that to get to the two. Now I've got the two. I can probably get to the ace again. Yes, I can. And then we're going to go down. I can get the king. Um, I can't get to a jack from here. Need another card. Quick tap. That gives me the 10, which takes me to the jack. The jack leaves me stuck, so I'm going to pull out another one. Seven. Seven is equal to, so I have to go for eight, and then back down to seven, and I have cleared. So there's Now, the, this there does is. look like maths. <laughs> well, I mean, cards in general, card games involve numbers, and so, yeah, it's a bit mathsy. Um, the, the previews I've seen about this say that it's obviously very heavy into the solitaire, but the, the golf aspect takes a bit of a back seat. As in, there's not much golfiness in it, really. Well, I know, I know that there's um, for, uh, certainly from the original. There's the whenever you're tapping cards, you hear the. <laughs> <laughs> so there's um, the sound um, effects. And there's the you have to do things in like a par, don't you? You have to. You have yeah, to hit, you're supposed uh, to do it in as few hits as possible, as few strikes. So uh, that way you'll come in under par or, or over par or whatever. Mm. So there's a there's a golfy aspect, I suppose. Uh, Okay, um, so Umonkey's asking, uh, well, suggesting that maybe they could like try putting two exciting sports together, like lion taming and boxing, and making a game out of it. Um, lion taming and boxing. Punch the lion. I mean, isn't that just called punch the lion? Y yeah. And uh, also copyright. 
uh, because I'm going to make that now. So you can't, he suggested it. You can't copyright that. That's trademark. Oh, no, ah. 2014. If I post it, to, if I post the idea to myself, then it's mine. <laughs> Is that how copyright law that, works? Well, sort of. I've done that before as well. Um, so. We got eight, <laughs> we got eight to Seth asking. Um, this looks like the same. Uh, this looks the same as the original, um, but with different backgrounds. Is there really anything different about it? I only played the original a little bit. I had to do an article on it like a year or two ago, but I, it's it, pretty similar. It looks it's pretty similar. I mean, there's only so much you can do, I suppose, with this with this format. It's at the end of the game, a bit of solitaire, um, mm. but the difference difference here is that this is free to play uh, and people have kind of gone at that which you know is understandable people do bulk a little bit at free to play stuff because sometimes it can be a bit rubbish um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what the big difference is here uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I've got myself into a rut now oh, here we go I've got the five finally probably probably didn't do that brilliantly but I've completed my little course here the hole is complete so hopefully I should be able to move on to the next one. I've got three stars. The little gopher gerbil thing seems quite happy with me. So that's the result. Next, moving on. Go on, move on. Um, now, uh, I, I will uh, interject uh, just very quickly and mm -hmm. say, uh, um, obviously, if you are watching this on a catch-up, because we do put these post these catch-ups out later, then you will be we missing uh, the uh, the early access promo codes that the uh, Scallywags devs are currently posting into our chat room. So, uh, oh. oh. So uh, obviously, if you were here, and you sorry, if you are here, uh, <laughs> then uh, then um, yeah, go for your life. You've got some uh, you've got some codes to redeem. So uh, thank you very much for those guys. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, so so I I think that this game, first of all, I think the art style looks a little bit uh, mixed. It looks a little bit. Um, What's a good way to sort of describe it? What do you mean it? between like the the difference between the foreground art and the background art or something? Yeah, it's like it doesn't quite gel. Well, mm, I, I I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> it's quite sort of cartoony and upbeat looking, I guess. It's got a it's, it's charming enough. I mean, the the animations are very smooth from when your cards are flicking away. I mean, as I say, there's not a huge amount that you can do all you have to do here is they're trying to make the presentation seem kind of fun and jolly and so they've decided to make stuff bounce around all over the place and cast the cards somersault as you tap them away and occasionally a weird gopher appears the gopher looked a bit weird i'll be honest that didn't really seem okay. to fit no. fit the rest of it no um but uh, they're showing me some extra perks and power-ups which i'm not sure whether they were in the original or not so i can tap a skyball and it will clear all the cards vertically, which sent a gopher <laughs> rocketing up the screen on the back of a golf ball. <laughs> That's kind of cool. We don't see that that often. Well, I'm down with that. Right, let's see if we can do this sensibly. So Jack, we'll go down to 10. We'll go back up to a Jack. We'll go back down to a 10. We'll go back... Ooh, there's not another 10, is there? We'll go back up to a Jack, and then up to yeah. a Queen. And we can't go down again, so I'm going to have to grab another one. There's a 4. Can't get the four there. Mm. I'll use the rocket power pack there. That's knocked those cards off, and I'll do the same thing. Uh, I can't get at the one on the right yet, so I need to move on. There's a three here. Uh, there's a two. I can grab that. Uh, go on. I'm, I'm in a corner again, so I'm going to have to bust out another one. There's a six. Go up to the seven. Go back down to the six. There's a six there as well. Mm. Can't get that, so I need to hit another card. Got a seven, though. That will take me back down to the six. But once again, backed into a corner. There's a nine. I can get that from the eight. That's opened up a two, which leaves me kind of nowhere. The jack gives me the queen. Fantastic. And the rocket chipmunk thing has cleared the screen again. Stroke three of three. There it is. Well, there we are. Um, so, uh, Fairway Solitaire Blast uh, from Big Fish Games um, is uh, free for those asking in the App Store. It's uh, it's available on uh, Canadian App Store at least. It's probably available on New Zealand. Probably as well. New Zealand as well. I'm not sure whether this is a soft launch uh, and therefore won't be available for a little while, or whether it will be available in the UK and the US at midnight tonight. We might have to mm -hmm. double check that, but we'll find out uh, before we we post up. But I think that'll do it for uh, Fairway Solitaire. Yes. There we go. That looks all. That looks fun. I think I might give that a go at some point. It's a, it's a universally popular game. People love it, and people have been playing it for for decades, for eons, even for so. generations. <laughs> exactly. So it, it worked out. It worked out just fine. Um, I think. I think we'll probably dive straight to the Angry Birds. I think the time has come. It's you reckon? 20, it's twenty two, and we're going to have to spend a little while because it is the Angry Birds epic game. So all I'm right. going to I'm going to pull up the graphic, and then we're going to go for it.
Here we are. Angry yep. Birds Epic. Here it Ooh. comes. Right. So, the background behind this then. Uh, this was announced with a kind of very small little teaser trailer, which showed a suit of armor with an Angry Bird sitting in the helmet, and then he jumped out of the screen and went blah. And everyone was like, what's this? Is Angry Birds Game of Thrones? Is it? What is this? We've got no idea. Um, turned out, it's the first Angry Birds turn-based RPG. Whoa, well, I've been waiting for one of those. Well, I know. It's what every, the game nobody knew they wanted, but apparently we do. Uh, so this is how it starts out. Now, I'm going to show you briefly. Here's the overworld map. This is the, the land. You're on an island, and you start off as the Red Bird, and uh, you have to make your way along this set path, a bit like the Brave Land game that we were playing earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, in pursuit of your stolen eggs, because this is an Angry Birds game, so your eggs have been stolen again. Ah, uh, so are you playing as Redbird or are you playing as Terence? At the moment, you're playing as the Red Bird. Now, I've gone back to the beginning, because I played this on an iPod Touch, uh, but I haven't synced up the saves. Okay. So, I just want to show you it from the start, so you know, you know what you're dealing with. Uh, in order to make attacks, like the screen is showing me, you put your finger on the bird, you drag it towards the pig, and then you release your finger, and he dives forward, and he hacks at the piggy. That's it. Very, very, very simple. Um, you get a three-star system, just like you did with the, the old games. Uh, and depending on how many stars you get, it allows you to spin this wheel here and mm -hmm. select items. So you'll randomly get a few bits and pieces, a banana in this case, and a clamshell. These items can be used in the crafting system. Yes, there's a crafting system that lets you build your own weaponry. So you can upgrade your little sword and you can build a mage staff for your yellow bird Gandalf character who will show up in a little bit um, and uh, yeah it's it's just, it's a bit weird I'll be honest with you um, I did a preview video of this on AppSpy um, and played through a bit of it but uh, I was I mentioned something that I said to you in the podcast and, and we discussed um, we were saying about how it's a bit weird having the Angry Birds in an RPG setting but you said that in many ways it's not that weird because the Angry Birds are kind of the new Sonic and Mario. Yeah, so I mean, like, there's a, a great history of um, the main, you know, the, the sort of like, what you might think of as like main consoles, like, you know, from Sega and Nintendo back in the mm. day, from using their mascots in lots of different ways. So yes. Mario's done all sorts of RPGs and uh, lots of RPGs now, Paper Mario and also the original, the original Paper, uh, the original Mario JRPG, I think it was called Mario Quest or Mario Stars or something. You know um, better than me. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's that. Um, Sonic was in his own RPG by Bioware. You know, there, there are there are examples of all of these games, and I, I do feel like I do feel like Angry Birds is going to be the new Mario. It is going to be the not necessarily in terms of like complexity and play density or anything like that. You know, I don't think I don't think it's it, it's as complicated as like Super Mario World Three, for example. Even though some of the last levels in Angry Birds Star Wars Two are flipping hard. Um, it's not about the complexity so much as the brand recognition, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. It's about exactly. the fact that now, if you ask very, very young children now who Mario is, they might be like, unless they they've got a Wii, uh, and no one's got a Wii U, for example, you know, your little kids like, eh, man, mm. what? Whereas, exactly. whereas Angry Birds, they know what the Angry Birds are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it exactly. And I do feel like, you know, I do feel like this is this is a, a, a kind of interesting move from them. You know, like, and ultimately they are just the Angry Birds, all of them. You know, they are just little circles, aren't they? They mm. can fit into anything, um, into any sort of playstyle. You know, we've had Angry Birds Go, which is a kart racer, and obviously the physics-based Angry Birds games. So I do feel like there is some sort of movement here to uh, to do some stuff. So um, just very quickly. Um, uh, if you are just joining us now for the, um, is this probably going to be our final game? This, is, this will be the last leg. We'll I, stick uh, with this okay. for a little while. We'll, st we'll stick with this for a little bit. Um, uh, this is Angry Birds Epic, which is in soft launch right now. That's right. It came out uh, a couple of days ago. And again, this is uh, definitely in Canada, I think in New Zealand. This won't be coming to the UK and the US for a little bit. But if you have Canadian or US, uh, sorry, or New Zealand App Store accounts, you will be able to get hold of it. So mm -hmm. this isn't the, technically the finished pre-release uh, version. They will iron out a few kinks. They'll probably adjust the in-app purchase system, which there is one, um, and like polish it up a bit before it goes to final mm. launch. But given this, you know, popularity of the series and everything, we thought it was fair to give you a uh, advanced heads mm. up about this one. 
Absolutely. So, um, uh, obviously, in the chat room, if you are um, if you're watching away and you uh, fancy getting involved, then uh, do put in any questions, any comments, that sort of thing, and I will direct them at James. Um, it turns out we have two people uh, who have Wii U's uh, watching oh, this chat. Cool. So that's that's two both of them. them. That's all exactly. Of them. That's fantastic. All, that's every, that's Welcome. Everyone. Congratulations. Um, that's uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. That's Gap Rules and uh, also our community manager, Caffeine Dreamer, uh, Danny. Uh, oh, nice. Magpie, by the way. We're trying to brute force a nickname on him. Um, right. I'll, just, I'll just explain this briefly. So I've got this great big pig here, right? And you can see uh, above him in a little speech bubble, there's like a little charging bar with uh, the red bird's face on it. This is telling me when he's going to attack. It's like a psych out bar. So mm -hmm. at the moment, he's got one bar, and uh, so, which means uh, when I attack him, he's going to take a hit. But when he attacks me next, he won't hit me, but he'll psych up one more. There you go. Uh, it, it just did it then. Right. And now, the next time, it's going to attack me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the red bird, and that activates his shielding power. So that when someone comes in for attack, he hops back. And that means that he's still taking damage, but he's taken less damage, which is important because this pig is massive and will totally kick my ass. Mm -hmm. So I should probably actually be attacking the little one at this point. Oh. Uh, made a mistake. Well, because the little one, I need to get him out of the way. I like the little one. He looks all sweet and cute. Well, they all look sweet and cute. I mean, that's... Well, a big, uh, big one. Well, maybe not. The one thing we should say is that it is obviously a very good-looking game. Rovio have been doing this for ages. Uh, they know... They've got a huge amount of resources they can draw upon. Um, and they know how to make a game look good. And it certainly does look good. The RPG mechanics themselves are quite simple. I mean... This was never going to be a complicated game because it still has to appeal to a fairly large audience. So as you can see at the moment, there's no complex menu systems. I'm not activating buffs by going through lots of skill trees or anything. I'm just grabbing it, sliding my finger along, and bam, he attacks. Things are going to be get a bit more complicated in a minute because I'm about... Oh, hang on. Let me launch this little uh, chili pepper you see. I'm going to drag him onto the red bird. Get hot. Go He's going to go mental and launch a super attack and take out the piggy. There we are. Victory for me. But uh, I need to meet up with some more birds. I think the yellow bird is the next person I'm going to encounter and he's going to introduce maybe a little bit of magic to the equation, which does make things a tad more interesting. Hmm. But so, uh, Spyfan says, the little one is sweet and cute. And you know what? I'm 100% <laughs> uh, behind uh, behind you on that one. I, do you know? I'm very much like um, uh, one of our um, one of our uh, colleagues, a guy called Keith, who run, go, runs uh, Gamer.biz. Mm. I like the piggies a little bit more than I like the Angry Birds. You I don't necessarily think... with the swine. I absolutely do. I have um, uh, swine fever. Is that a thing? Should we? Can we joke about that? Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe not. Um, you're so, making bacon. That's what you're doing. <laughs> making bacon. That's great. Um, I really like the piggy designs. I think they're sweet, especially the little, the little small ones. I think they're lovely. Um, but um, yeah, uh, so apparently, you know, according to uh, Hans Kalsu, he says that there's um, there's healer birds. There's a samurai for red. There's a samurai really? class. Oh, awesome! He can craft potions. There's a pirate. Yep, I've done some potion crafting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. So it's certainly more involved than just your basic angry birds. Mm. Um, that goes without saying. But as you can see here, I'm advancing through several stages in a single encounter. So my energy isn't being restored as I move through. But I'm about to unlock the yellow bird because he's trapped in a little prison here. He's freaking out. So I need to get him uh, unblocked so that he can do some nice, delicious damage on my behalf. Um, cool. But I am getting laid into by all his mates. So let me just go and attack the yellow bird again. And we're about to have a bit of yellow bird fever. Yellow bird freedom. Oh, he's gone mental. He's gone all psycho Gandalf and oh. uh, blasted them with uh, electricity. And I've won. Battle win there. Fantastic. Well, fantastic. Just keep doing that. Then. Yeah, easy. That's all right. Now I've got an extra bird. Now I think the game is going to tell you what to do with it, which is always nice. Um, I think the other thing I need to mention here, this mm. is free to play as well. Yeah, right. there's been a little bit of chat in the chat room about this. Yeah. So, um, have you come up against how that how the IAPs work? I have. So, okay. uh, the way that it seemed to work mostly to me, you can see up in the top right corner of the screen that there are three currencies. You've got some uh, gold matter, you've got a kind of bluey coin, and you've also got some gem hearts, which are at the top here. Uh, if I were to tap that, up plus on the gem heart it's the lesser essence of friendship or greater essence of friendship and you can buy them for these coins but obviously if you go along here you got one for a thousand coins and then you start getting into the proper in-app purchases so 69 pounds 99 
for the Mighty Eagle's treasure chest. That's mm -hmm. 3,000 coins for 70 quid. I'm going to take my glasses off. <laughs> and uh, d d ooh, double take for that A one. Double yeah. take Oof. and be like, now, what? That's not to say that you have to spend that. Like, okay. most free to play games do have that in it. Where I've encountered the free to play issue is. Further you get, you do start to die in battle, and when you die, you use potions. Now, these potions can be crafted by uh, going and picking up the items you get at the end of every battle. So those shells and stuff, you can turn those into health potions. But when you run out, you can buy more potions with gold coins. And if you run out of gold coins, you need to be spending some real money to get those potions. So that's where it comes in. Now, I'm about to launch my first attack. There you go, with the yellow bird. He's just sent a thunderclap, frazzling all of these piggies here. And I can also use buffs. Each bird has a power buff. So I can, for example, drag my yellow bird onto the red bird. And what will happen is he'll activate a little electric charge that circles the red bird. Now, if the red bird gets attacked, the aggressor will take some damage when he makes that attack. So that's a little bit of a benefit. Equally, the red bird can add a shielding buff to the yellow bird. So that just protects him a little bit more, but doesn't do any damage in and of itself. So I'm just going to continue attacking here. I should probably have uh, buffed up the yellow bird a bit, but it's all right. He can handle it. Mm -hmm. He's taken a couple of hits. I'm going to do it again. So if I drag the red bird onto the yellow bird, as you see, he just casts a spell and uh, his shield boost uh, rating goes up. So. I'm now going to launch my lightning attack, and that's both piggies down, and another victory for me. What a result. So, up until, I think I played for about 25-30 minutes before I died, or before I encountered any difficulties. It's all sort of very easy going at first, and it's quite playable. Now, it's easy to be cynical about this sort of thing, and I am prone to a bit of cynicism. You try not you, to be. No, no, no. Well, a little bit. A little bit. I, I try not to be, but it's it's easy to get a little bit cynical about the various Angry Birds spin-offs. The, the go-kart one, I mean, you liked it. I kind of thought it was crap. It, the game itself was very nice. <laughs> All right, what do you really think about it? I know, well, well no, the game itself was, was good, but it had no tracks, and the free-to-play system and energy system was really obnoxious. So, uh, for me, it could just, like, do one. I was not interested at all. There's also another game coming out from the Angry Birds uh, camp called Angry Birds Stella, which I reckon is going to be some adventure, action adventure, which has clearly been designed for girls. And this isn't us saying that in a sexist way. Fine. The Fine. PR material um, was going on about girls and how, like, don't worry if you're pink, you can still do stuff even if you're a girl. <laughs> it didn't quite say that, but it was basically insinuating it. So we thought that was a bit... I don't know, off color and stuff. We don't know what the game's going to be yet, but we know it exists. This this one was advertised this later, is, but came out first. This is Rovio, and sort of to a lesser extent, and well, yeah. I mean, this is Rovio trying new genres, isn't it? You know, they yeah. they, they, they launched Rovio Stars, which obviously is its own thing, and and had you know some really fantastic successes with. Well, they, they've done three games so far. They're doing, a, uh, I think they're doing three or four this year as the well. The Rovio Stars was like a sub-publishing house within yeah. Rovio. And they did uh, Icebreaker, a Viking Brilliant. bridge. That was Brilliant. really nice. The other one they uh, did that was really good was uh, that little Tiny, tiny thief. thief. Yes. and they That did, was uh, really good. They, and then the third game, which was a bit of a disappointment, which was Juice Cubes. Oh, yeah, that was a sort of bejeweled desk match three yeah, it was number, a bit, wasn't it? It was a bit... Uh, yeah. it's, it's a bit... Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, they are trying all of these different things. And I think I think the important thing to remember with um, Angry Birds Go and with uh, Angry Birds Epic and with Angry Birds Stella is that they are trying out different... Not all of these games are going to be for all the same people. And I think that's something that... that, that that unfortunately we as uh, like a game playing community often forget. You know, not all games are built for all of us. No, this is definitely targeting a more niche audience. Angry Birds was designed to appeal to everyone. Your mum and your dad and your cat and your brother and your sister. It doesn't matter. Whereas these games, not everyone is into um, RPGs. Not mm. Certainly not turn-based RPGs. That's kind yep. of a, a more classic genre that you would find back in this 8-bit and the 16-bit days. So they are attracting a different kind of audience with this one. Um, the question is whether an RPG-loving audience is going to want to play an Angry Birds RPG. Or indeed, yeah. whether the Angry Birds player wants to play an RPG. That's, that's sort of the question, and that's what we're... Well, what's what Rovio are going to find out within a couple of weeks, I suppose. Um, 
I've just leveled up. See, there's leveling in this. It's a proper RPG. Levels and everything. Um, Do, now, uh, now, obviously, we can't hear the audio for it because we still, still need to figure that out. But um, uh, what I hope there is, is right at the end, it goes... No, because lawsuits. Lots of lawsuits. But that would be... Yes, that would be... That would be the best. And also, and a guy with yellow spiky hair and a sword. I always thought he'd take off. You know, um, I looked at Final um, I realised oh. I had Final Fantasy VII on my PS3 last night. I bought it, like, years ago, and I never realised. And I was like, oh my god, I've got it. And I just booted up just to play in the intro sequence, just to see what it looked like and remind me. And I was like, ah, Cloud Strife. Ah, oh. oh, oh, nice. Cloud Strife with, like, four different models. Like, like how, why, how did they do that? That is a weird game. The, the story of that game is... Of hair. And four yeah. strands of oh, amazing, and and um, Barrett with his big like cube hands. That's right. That was, that <laughs> that was, was kind of so good. But so, what I'm doing okay. here, just just to let you know before you, before you carry on, I am fighting yeah, these on. guys to reach this anvil thing behind me. I've just beaten them both, and the anvil okay. will allow me to do a bit of crafting, which is what we're going to show you now. So we can show you the crafting system before we go. Um, I've earned two extra bits here because I only got three stars out of that. That's a bit rubbish. Um, but I think they're about to introduce me to weapon-making abilities, which are always, always welcome. Here you go, there's a bunch of fireworks. The yellow bird's gotten very excited. Uh, the guys have taken their piggy idol, mm -hmm. our aggressors, and they are running off into a mountain now. But I've got a magic anvil, which lets me forge my own weapons uh, and put items in my offhand as well, so you can hopefully do two-handed stuff. This is my little kind of home base. It's on the beach. Uh, very nice. I'm going to tap on the anvil, and this shows me the crafting system. So I want to make my own fork lance. I've got the blueprint for it, so now I just need to put it together. I've assembled the items. There's a dice roll, and the dice roll, I think, determines what kind of buffs and bonuses it's going to get. That's entirely random. The game mm. decides that for me. Uh, but it's created one. I've now got a little stick with a fork in it, and then like a sea an enemy attached or something. Bit weird, um, but whatever it is, I have, I have achieved it. It is mine. I can try and build it again, but look, the materials are missing. So you need to acquire more stuff as you go through, and then you'll be able to power up all your other birds and beasties. If I put my finger on the birds here, uh, you can see what their stats are, what their classes are as well. There you go, there's a red bird. He's got his night armor equipped. And uh, here's the mage bird. He's got a funny little sword thing. Not sword, funny little staff, which lets him do his magic spells. Uh, and now, I should have extra power when I'm laying into folks on the battlefield, which I will now show you in this next round. And then I think we will wrap it up. Okay, fantastic. Um, okay. Oh, so hello. Sorry, uh, interrupting oh. again. Speaking of juice cubes, I've just got an advert for it. A full screen ad for juice cubes has just popped up. This buy, buy is, juice cubes, kids. Yeah, this is the free to play aspect we were talking about. So you know, if you get free to play games, interstitials. Yeah, interstitial adverts. You're gonna have to put up with them because that's how it works. That's how gaming works now. Free to play gaming, you've got to tolerate ads and pop ups. I'm, and... I'm really excited. I mean, juice cubes aside, um, I am actually, which was fine. Um, <laughs> I am really, really excited to see what they do next with the uh, Rovio stars. Um, like, I, from what we've kind of talked with Rovio about, they, there are going to be a fair few, not lots, but a couple of games coming out for from the Rovio stars uh, yeah. house. And I really do feel like they've had some really good successes in the past. And, and I think that this is kind of... It, it, it sort of demonstrates that it is, a, it is a house... You know, it is a mobile company that is like thinking about what it can do because it can't just keep doing the physics based fling birds at things uh, no, they do need to branch out and it's naive to think that anything they do ever again is going to be as successful as angry birds you cannot sort of bottle that lightning twice and then, and then use it it just doesn't happen so you're going to have to accept the fact that whatever they do is going to be compared to the previous thing and say well it's not as popular as this it's never going to happen and even if you're not a big angry birds fan i mean i'm not a huge angry birds fan but it, it's fine you know it's competently mm. made and if the rovio stars thing shows anything that little sub publishing house uh, it shows that they've got quite good taste they're backing games which are actually quite strong mm. and you know to their credit that's a good thing and it, they allow them to put that little extra sheen like tiny thief is very very polished it's very pretty when it's uh, in its presentation now my red birds just died which is a bit of a shame but I still, oh. i've still got my yellow bird and i'm going to drag that power chili which has charged up 
and he's going to go all four mental on him and strike him repeatedly in the face with his lightning strikes. There was no way to save the red bird then because the big piggy, he kept attacking him and I already had my little buff thing on. So I'm going to lay into him once more. This next time I'm going to charge my own power up. So I'm going to hold on to the bird. I'm going to tap him. Now he's going to cast that electricity thing on himself. He'll take a hit and it'll hurt. Oh, it killed me. But I can revive the bird. That didn't happen the first time out. Nightmare. So I've now revived both birds, uh, but that's cost me a little bit of coin. So mm. that's, again, where the free-to-play aspect comes in. So if I attack him one more time, he's down and he's out. And that's it. Victory for me. So that's Angry Birds Epic in its current state. Things may change over the next few weeks. Rovio are obviously going to make tweaks and stuff like that until it eventually goes live uh, in the UK and in the US. We can't mm. guarantee when that will be because they don't know. But uh, if you are in either of the other territories, you're in New Zealand or you're in Canada, you can carry on playing. We'll keep an eye on it, obviously, because we're interested to see how it turns out. Uh, but all the other games that we played should be out Midnight tonight. So if you're watching this on Catch Up, it's Thursday. Thursday the 20th, those games will be available for you to buy. We'll do exactly the same thing next Wednesday. It's going to keep this as a running show. We'll keep you up to date on the newest releases that are going to be appearing. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're going to do the Pocket Gamer podcast. Yeah, God. I know. Uh, and on Friday, there is a really nice space-looking game. Uh, I forget the name of it offhand, but I've taken a quick look, and it looks well sexy. Uh, so I reckon we're going to devote an hour or so on Friday evening, same time, 5 p.m. Uh, in the evening in Britain, or 9 a.m. if you're on Pacific Standard Time, and we're going to take a kind of good lengthy look at a nice sci-fi shooter. Check out AppSpy.com for more information on that. Uh, I've been James Gilmore. That was Peter Wellington. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we will catch you very soon. Join us tomorrow and Friday.